Uh, Diddy's going down, or at least one could assume. After all, he's caused some vehicles to, you know, poof, and psychologically tormented the artist Cassie for an audience on Instagram Live. And now, well, he's going to court for some pretty unsavory stuff. And according to leaked documents, there's 10 celebrities he's taking with him. So who are these named celebrities? Let's start with Young Miami. City girls are not in Rodney, Lil Rod Jones's $30 million lawsuit against the rapper Diddy, owner and operator of Bad Boy Records. He says his life's been determinably impacted since agreeing to work on the Love album Off the Grid. One of the instances that left Jones so traumatized, he stated, was that Young Miami's cousin and or assistant, he's not sure, tried forcing unconsensual relations with him. Jones says he was with Diddy, Young Miami, and the female cousin person on Thanksgiving in 2022. He alleges that Miami's cousin person burst into the bathroom while he was inside, at which point she tried forcefully touching him with her mouth and her hands. Jones attempted to get away only to have the woman persist him back into the main room. Young Miami is being called to court as a defendant for Diddy, but also faces questioning on the stand due to Jones's allegations as she was among those who were paid monthly fees by Diddy to work as his working girls. More on that in a bit. Cuba Gooding Jr. is an Oscar winning actor who's also being accused of harassment, an essay by Jones. Jones states in his case that he believes that Diddy was G warding Gooding Jr. to behave in a similar manner to which Jones accuses Diddy of behaving. Eh? Get, hear my playful language? Remember, this is a brand spanking new court case. We can't assume anything, it's all alleged, so take everything with a grain of salt. Anyways, one recording incident that warrants harassment claims from Jones occurred while on a yacht in January 2023. Jones alleges he was introduced to Gooding, who proceeded to grope him and try and touch him before he had to forcibly push him away. To quote, Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from essaying Mr. Jones. The suit says that with multiple allegations in this lawsuit, including these, screenshots are also included that claim to show the moments surrounding the alleged incidents. Diddy's own son is apparently involved. Our next segment is on Justin Combs, who thinks he's something of a rapper himself, but he really just spends his time crashing cars and spending his father's money. So, but you know what? He might have also witnessed or participated in something crucial, as Jones alleges in his case that in September of 2022, a man identified in the lawsuit only as G who was a friend of Diddy's son Justin, was popped. During the alleged incident, Jones says he heard bangs while two feet away from the restroom at the Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles. When Diddy and Justin exited the restroom, Jones saw G suffering from a wound on the floor of the bathroom, at which point he offered assistance. Per Jones, Diddy, quote, forced him to lie to the authorities about the event, with police being told it was the result of a drive-by. A rep for Diddy issued a statement to TMZ, denying the allegations which they say are lies from a desperate person, referring to Jones. The lawsuit implicates Justin of also procuring girls for parties where Combs then actually apparently spiked people and recorded them. Ugh. Meanwhile, Stevie J is also at the center of an allegation. Bad Boys Records producer allegedly, according to Jones, was also being G-worded by Diddy, who used his quoted admiration of Stevie J as part of what Jones says was intended to leave to Stevie J's anxiety concerning homosexuality being erased. This is a uh, pretty whack. Again, reminder, all alleged, all speculation. But continuing on, Jones alleged that Diddy even once played him footage showing Stevie J like having intercourse with a guy. And Stevie J himself had to respond to this online since the news broke, telling TMZ his lawyer will be handling for this from going forward. Again, screenshots are included in the lawsuit in connection to this. And an adult film star named Knockout has been connected as well. In fact, in in reality, to stir the pot, Knockout himself addressed the leaked screenshots on Twitter, admitting it's me amid speculation. So things are heating up. Meanwhile, Prince Harry is having his awkward youth years uh, hanging with rappers pulled up by Jones, who thinks that Harry in his court case, but not as a perpetrator, rather as a witness to acts done, which ultimately isn't better, especially given it's the context that there's some forms of trafficking charges the feds have laid against Diddy. According to Jones's lawsuit, first filed in February, Diddy's co-defendants were rewarded for quote participating in and facilitating Combs 
trafficking venture by getting affiliation and access to Mr. Combs' popularity. According to Jones, Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. Oh, there's the name drop. Well, it can be argued it's kind of deeply unfair for Harry to be singled out by name when he has not been accused of anything wrong and others aren't named. His naming in the suit exposes how interconnected the elite of our world are and how they can truly be anywhere with anyone. Don't think there's some posh people, folks. On to another industry notable. This time it's the former Motown Records CEO, Ethiopia Habtermerium, who Jones says in his lawsuit visited Combs' house during writing sessions and social gatherings and that she quote, had a duty and obligation to ensure working girls and girls in general were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking any drinks. Another staffer accused by Mr. Jones is Christina Corum. So in his lawsuit, Jones alleges he was once forced to work in Combs' bathroom while Combs, did he, showered in a naked glass enclosure, according to the lawsuit. When he raised concerns, Concerns about this form of these types of behavior to Karam, Combs' chief of staff. The lawsuit says she dismissed him as friendly horseplay, stating those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing he liked you. Jones was also told by Christina, you know, Sean will be Sean. The lawsuit accuses Corman of aiding and abetting Combs' essay of Jones and working with Combs to groom him into a male on male relationship. Jones has also listed UMG boss Lucian Grange in his lawsuit, stating that he either quote, knew or should have known about the drinks getting spiked at parties. Specifically, Jones says that Universal sponsors and Grange attended listening parties at Combs's LA home, where Jones alleges that working girls and younger women were present and that they were getting spiked sometimes. It's no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself, the lawsuit claims. Grange knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was spiking attendees through laced bottles of DeLeon tequila and Ciroc vodka it adds. As a sponsor of these events, defendant Grange had a duty and obligation to ensure working girls and younger women were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol. At this point, uh, with names and information still developing, maybe we should take a second and probably cover what's going on. So let's dedicate our last two points on hashing how this all started. First, we're gonna start with how Cassie blew it open. So November 16th, Diddy's ex, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, filed a federal lawsuit in New York alleging years of violence. Her graphic lawsuit included such content as SA, domestic incidents, psychological and emotional torment. Diddy even blew up Kid Cootie's car to deter him from seeing Cassie romantically. No wonder J. Cole's been riding a bike everywhere since he and Diddy fell out. Diddy did what he does best in response. He denied, 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 denied one for each D in his dumbass nickname. And he ensured she settled out of court with him. As Diddy always does when someone sues him, go look at his track record. But it didn't make it go away this time. On December 7th, Tiffany Red, a Grammy winning singer songwriter, published an open letter to Combs via Rolling Stone, stating despite the settlement, Cassie's claims were all true. She even detailed a party where she claimed claims that Combs separated Cassie from her and their friends for what Cassie described in her lawsuit as a arrangement where you make her perform acts with male adult workers against her will. Red's graphically detailed public letter had power, especially as she detailed other instances where even she became victim to Diddy's violence just by being in his presence, which helped lead to our next segment and final, the other accusations. Five days after Combs and Cassie settled, a former Syracuse University college student sued Combs for allegedly taking advantage of her and recording it in 1991, just before New York State's Adult Survivors Act on November 26th third deadline, a second anonymous accuser filed a lawsuit against Combs and also singer-songwriter Aaron Hall, stating they had violated she and a friend and did even show up at her house a few days later, threatening and harming the, her and the other victim to ensure they wouldn't share the story. Then comes December 6, another Jane Doe plaintiff filed a lawsuit against Combs' daddy's house recording and Bad Boy Entertainment, alleging that in 2003 she was physically violated by Combs, former Bad Boy president Harve Pierre, and another unidentified 
man at Combs' studio in New York City. Since this fourth accusation now, Diddy's been falling to ruins. Hulu has canned his reality show centered around his family, Combs had to step aside as the chairman role at Revolt, and the liquor company Diageo asked a judge to prevent him from appearing on the new advertisement for DeLeon. February rolled in and on the 27th, Combs was sued by producer Rodney Little Rod Jones for $30 million for SA. The producer, as we know, worked on the Love album and says he was subject to all sorts of extreme crimes in his 70 page lawsuit. And then now, March 25th, the newest update. Law enforcement officials carried out simultaneous raids of Combs' home in Los Angeles and Miami with Jane and John Doe interviews being conducted. And there's some more tea to come. For now, there you have it. The update on the demise of Diddy and his career. Remember to stay safe everyone and stay aware. Crime like this happens everywhere so it's best to protect yourself however you can. Comment down below what you think of these allegations and what their outcomes could be and be sure to drop a like on our page and this video to stay up to date on all our newest content.